So now we're going to talk about electron dot symbols. There's another term for this. You may hear me use from time to time. Um, we also call these Lewis symbols. So let me write this down here. Lewis symbols. So if you hear me use the term Lewis symbols, it's the same thing as electron dot symbols, right? And basically, this is a way of representing an atom in terms of the number of valence electrons that it has, right? And it's a very simple idea. Basically, it consists of writing down the formula for the particular atom, such as in the case of magnesium here. And then we use single dots to represent electrons that we place around the symbol, right? So we can put them like this or like um, this or, you know, different ways, right? As long as you have the two dots surrounding the symbol for the element. Basically, that's what Lewis symbols are. So it's very simple. and uh, You can actually use this to write down, use this idea, I should say, to write down the Lewis symbols of different atoms, as you can see here. From sodium to carbon, these are the Lewis symbols here. We have phosphorus here. We have oxygen. Now, this is kind of out of place. This pair of electrons should actually be here. So in actual fact, um, these two electrons here should be here and um, you should have this dot closer and that's basically the Lewis symbol for oxygen so it's a very simple idea very useful but you know very simple um, especially when you want to look at the number of valence electrons in each group so as you can see here for the elements in group 2a we can write down the Lewis symbols for each of these elements and you see they all have two electrons or two dots around each of the symbols for the different elements, right? So it's a very relatively simple idea. So based on that, we can answer questions such as the one ones that we see here. It says X with a dot here is the electron dot symbol for, and it gives you three options, right? Now, the question you have to ask yourself is what groups are these elements in? So if you go to the periodic table, you see that of these three elements, only two of them are in group one and therefore would have one valence electron, right? So therefore the answer would be sodium and potassium. Um, let me do that here. So this is, the answer would be number one and number two. And then in the case of this, where you have a total of five valence electrons, again, you'd have to go to the periodic table and look for the elements in group 5A. And if you do that, you see that of the elements here listed, the only two that are in group 5A would be nitrogen and phosphorus. And that's basically how we answer that question. All right, so those are the answers to the questions I just did. So now we're going to get into what is known as the octet rule. The octet rule is basically a reflection of the fact that it was observed that structures that have eight valence electrons, they tend to be stable and the same is true also for um, structures that have two valence electrons right um, but the octet rule of course refers to eight which is in most cases so basically if you look at the elements in group eight which is a group furthest to the right of the periodic table you'll see that those elements have eight electrons on their valence shell or valence um well eight valence electrons with the exception of helium. Helium is the only element which does not have eight valence electrons. It has only two, but that also confers stability. And the reason why, to simply put it, is that basically we're talking about a situation where these structures have a full outer energy level or shell, right? So basically, because it's full, there's some stability that's conferred to that structural um, arrangement. So therefore, we have what is known as the octet rule, which says basically that structures that have either eight or two valence electrons on their valence shell um, is basically very stable, all right? And we're going to learn more about that when it comes to the formation of ionic and covalent bonds, all right? Which would be the subject of the next video. Um, so I will stop here, and I'll see you next time.